go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Welcome all to the Master Long Show. Yeah, so today the internet might, might be a bit lag. Before I came in, it seems a bit uh, lag because whole day raining. Uh, so the fiber internet is affected. Also, welcome all to the Master Long Show. Wow, got Japanese name. Master don't know how to pronounce, but rocket, rocket. Ah, Nigoro, I think China forget that it owes its powerful economy to the efforts of its predecessors. They seem to be taking the economy for granted. Uh, it seems that they have their own uh, agenda instead of uh, focusing on pushing the economy. So SJP is like the emperor like that. I uh, don't know what is his real objective. Meme news, I'm glad that I all in China stocks last week. Seems like uh, this week could, could be the lows really. Last night Alibaba help, helped up. Uh, so the, the sell down kind of taper off already. Then today Hong Kong market, Baba $70 close. So tonight we, we see that. 99A close at 70, we see BABA can close at 72 or not. Clement, last week bought Baba, Koma, but today onwards, what la, what la, Hantu, wow, all can speak Japanese, oh, Baba Bird, what la, what la, Clash 11, let's go, let's go, oh. so today a lot of cover, but today maybe we'll have lag, but before I came in, it was quite laggy, a lot of drop frames, so we'll just proceed, la. Oh, might, might, might have some lag, but we see how it goes. Also, I had the poll for you all. Yeah. So, uh, in this poll, I asked you all, uh, today Hong Kong market green color, is this real or fake recovery? Yeah, so I end the poll. So, it seems like the results is quite mixed. Uh. So, 52% thinks that this is fake recovery. So, today the green in the Hong Kong is fake one. We'll crash over. So we'll break back the $70 support. 70 and 72 seems very key support level. So real recovery, 47%. Bottom rate, so half, half, like half, half thing. The worst is over, half thing is not. I'm the side that I'm optimistic. Like. I think we could have seen the bottom rate. Was, like yesterday, the Hong Kong market was down 2.5%, but, but it closed down only 0.8%. So some sort of big buyer has come into play already. Oh, so Ping An never dropped. Right? Wow, Ping An holding well. The dividend is just too juicy already. Okay, so let me begin my sharing. I chit chat uh, with you all towards the end. Oh, so let's go, let's go. So tonight will be the CPI. Uh. Now it's like Singapore, Hong Kong time, 8 p.m. So the CPI will come in at about 9.30 p.m. Singapore, Hong Kong time. Oh, so we, we see how it goes. Or oh, if you all see the CPI, you, you all let, let me know. Uh. Oh. Okay, so... For Bitcoin, it seems that Senator Elizabeth Warren is gonna crack down on Bitcoin. Oh no! <laughs> so Bitcoin was very bullish. Once it broke past the 40k resistance, it immediately shoot up towards 44k. But because of this increased regulation, they want to uh, have uh, the bill aim to mandate stricter reporting requirements. Because for crypto, they are worried of those uh, like uh, illicit uh, transactions, uh, like money laundering or funding of terrorists, all this. So this more increased cost, increased regulation, that's not good for Bitcoin. Because crypto is meant to be like a free currency that anybody can use. So uh, intraday was down as low as the $40,000. So once you break past 40, right, the 40,000 resistance broken, it turns support. So it becomes a support level. So once it crashed towards 40K, right, people will think that 40K is very cheap. The retail investors will come in to support and buy the dip. So they buy the dip at the 40k level, then bounce up. Yeah, so if you are trading Bitcoin, the same thing will apply. Lah. You are trying to buy at 40k, then you might want to take profits at 60k. Although 60k usually will sell down already. But now it seems to be bouncing around, depending on the news. But the major one is whether first quarter, the launch of the Bitcoin ETF. Also, hope go Kim, you are around. Oh, hope you help me big on your Bitcoin. So the Master Long Show sponsored by Go Kim. So the main topic of today is inflation. So US the CPI will be announced tonight, or just at one one or two more hours later, it will be announced. So for all these analysts of this major bank, right, the expectation is that 3.1, 3.0 CPI. Also, that's very optimistic. That means inflation is coming down. And it's coming down quite sharply. So my personal view that most likely will hit target. Most target. Uh, 3, 3 or 3.1 easily tonight. 
Then if it comes in as a surprise at 2.9, well, then the US market is going to rally 2%. But I think unlikely. La. Most likely, it's in line, then a small green. Oh, that's, that's my view. Most likely in line and a small green. But what we are looking is ahead. What's out for? 2024. So uh, the CPI on average, uh, the analyst estimate is 3.04. But December, we might see a bounce uh, in 3.3 3. 3 like that for the CPI. It's bouncing up a bit higher right? because of the uh, holiday spending. So de December, people travel more for the Christmas holiday. So service, all this is a bit more expensive. But the problem we have is the core CPI. Core CPI, you exclude food, you exclude energy, is very sticky at 4%. It doesn't seem to be coming down. So things like what? Healthcare, hospitality, or uh, traveling, or service. Also, uh, and all, all this is not coming down. It remains very sticky. Yeah, whereas oil prices have started to come down already. Food prices have also uh, come down a bit. In fact, in China, like I mentioned yesterday, the prices of pork crashed by uh, 50%. From $28 per kg, dropped to $14 uh, per kg. So food and oil uh, is facing a down cycle. It's coming down due to the, the global slowdown in the economy. But the core inflation is only going up. So like your, your medical fees, all this, is only going up. The price of going to Disneyland is only going up. So uh, what does this mean ahead for the Fed? So in case you don't know, the FOMC meeting begins tonight. So tomorrow, uh, they will announce whether Wednesday night, uh, whether they want to uh, cut rates or hold it there. 100% is hold it there. Uh, the market is pricing it there. 100% is hold it there. But all about is the language used. What's the outlook ahead for 2024? So, okay, so the Fed right will have room to consider rate cuts uh, in 2024 next year. Why? Because uh, we see that the CPI right, is cocking just below 3% in the first half of 2024. Like the end of this year, November, December, is going to be 3% already. So easily it's going to come below 3% next year. Uh, that's the market expectation. I also believe so. Mostly because that oil has crashed from 95 to, to $70 level. So inflation now is coming down very rapidly. So for, for the US, uh, uh, what's ahead? US consumers, they are the one that have an expectation. Because as a consumer, right, let's say you are in China, you feel that there's deflation. Prices will be lower uh, next year. So you delay your spending. Because next year is going to be cheaper. You want to buy something, you wait for next year. Or you'll be more patient. But inflation, if it's high, things are getting more and more expensive. People will rush to buy. Or like that previously, we have the lockdowns. All these people rush to buy toilet paper, rush to buy instant noodles because they worry that the prices will spike up. So now it's actually quite quite balanced already. And the consumers, they are very optimistic that inf inflation is slowly coming down already. So the US consumer near-term inflation expectation dropped uh, rapidly uh, in November. They are very optimistic. But then the medium and long term expectation uh it is still still uh okay la. it's still like it still drop a bit 3.4 instead of 3.6. So the long term inflation, the consumers feel is that about 3 3 percent inflation. So look, looking at the chart is easier to explain. So previously, right, when you look at one or even two years ago, or consumers, right, they were very pessimistic. They feel that inflation is sky high at six percent, almost a six percent. 7%. Everything was crazy, so expensive. Uh, then uh, consumers, they were reluctant to buy. That's why we have a slowdown uh, in 2023. But now, as inflation gradually come down, the expectations ahead, consumers feel confident that the government is doing the right thing, that the rate hike is working, and now interest rate is moving towards 3%. So I think 3% is, is more like the base. Uh. I don't think it's coming back to 2%. I don't think it's coming back to... The, but for, for the Fed, their mandate is a 2% long-term inflation. I believe that you will remain at about 3% for 2024. It might come down a bit, but it's like 2.9, 2 2.8, 2, 2.7, that type. Yeah. So, what is beneficial? What, what assets are doing well? So, you see that bond prices have gone up. REITs have gone up. Uh, so... Previously, they were oversold because of the peak of the rate hike cycle. 
or you worry that oh no fat is gonna push rates to six percent seven percent or even eight percent those people who think that rates will go seven eight percent they are come gong uh, like i mentioned to you it's not possible even the previous uh, global financial crisis they also raised based to about the same level that's why i keep telling you all that if they raise further the water will boil out of the kettle most likely we will see the rates peak at about five percent plus and in the end when the rates peak at five percent plus long-term bonds and REITs they bottom off so now the good news is that they are having a v-shaped recovery so the boat has already left port already that so it's coming back up it's going back to the 1.1k level already so that there's lesser upside i would say because the historical average is more towards one between 1.1 to 1.2k for the risk index but you ask me master i still can buy risk or not if you are buying to hold for long term no problem example like you are you're 60 years old you are retired you have 1 million in cpf 2 million in cash you want to leave off your passive income then your 2 million you put into REITs you, you get 6% dividend now uh, that's very comfortable so nothing wrong if you want to buy REITs now to enjoy 6 or 6.5% dividend but you have to buy blue chip REITs don't go for the Sampan REITs uh, I, today I saw an investing note uh, people recommend ESR REITs ESR is a lousy REIT poorly managed you look at the NAV per share in the past the NAV per share is like 80 cents now it's like 40 cents or over a decade they lost half their NAV so low quality sampan risk over the long term you lose value go for the blue chip risk so the fire sale is over already you wanted to buy when people are most fearful during this sharp sell down the time to buy is to be greedy when others are fearful this is when maximum fear when all the financial youtubers tell you that it will get worse hot cash put fixed deposit fit your uh fit cash into your wall chest but that was the best time to buy now you miss the opportunity already so there's no fire sale but now a normal price 1.1k is still okay if you want to dca for, for long term but for me i won't be buying reads that because i don't need passive income and i feel that the market that's most undervalued now is the hong kong market so i'll talk about reads because quite a number of you all your age are like 40s 50s and 60s because my audience the age range is 30 to 60 year old so some of your 40s 50s 60s you own a portion of your portfolio in reads so i saw this table uh, from the investing note by this user happily so this guy he's retired already few million dollar read portfolio so you see that his s3 heavy portfolio you see the fluctuation his down his drawdown is about three hundred thousand. so it's probably like a, uh maybe a one million dollar read portfolio so when he's facing the 30 percent paper losses his drawdown uh hit uh three hundred thousand. so so quite big his portfolio is, is one million plus uh. I think his report portfolio but but he's very candid he always make very funny memes all this so i like to follow him actually i'm, I'm his fan actually i'm his fan yeah so i'm nothing against a uh, risk i study risk i study blue chips i study us china and singapore market wherever there's great companies great assets that are undervalued i go in and buy so wh when risk was selling down i had no money to buy but i tell you all that it was an opportunity so uh let's let us study a bit of the risk industry so for this segment right or uh, the other fire sale was during the lockdown period lockdown period or uh, shopping malls was shut down then you see a lot of this shopping mall reach right like Fraser commercial trust uh, capital mall trust the dpu was cut severely because they face lockdowns consumers cannot go to the shopping mall to buy so reach crash very sharply from a peak of like 1.5k or uh, it dropped down to this level of the 900 level 500 points or uh, almost a 35 percent uh, crash so subsequently we have the recovery or uh, back to 1400 then we crash again back to the 1000 to the 900 level yeah so it's quite clear that sometimes i'm not an expert in ta la. i don't use technical analysis i buy great companies that are undervalued but usually right when you reach a point right that is too cheap example when i was shouting buy on reads that i introduced you're the five tiger general they were paying like 7.5 percent dividend you blue chip company the masik own blue chip sponsor blue chip status low borrowing cost good track record solid office and uh shopping mall assets 7.5 percent dividend you and others tell you don't buy it's gonna get worse so that's where if you be greedy when others are fearful that's where the opportunity you buy 
at, at the lows or not not based on the chart so price is one thing another thing you look at valuations like I mentioned you are getting 0.3% discount to book value for blue chip reads whereas historically they trade at a, a one time book value or even a premium but for reads right you look at the longer term chart over the past decade it has been like a lost decade it's still stuck at this uh, $1,000 level so for REITs, right, to be honest, there isn't actually much uh, capital gains. Why? So REITs, the instrument, example, you buy an uh, office asset. It has a lifespan of 99 years. So using a straight line depreciation, right, you actually lose 1% of value per year. Uh, because you own the assets for 100 years or 99 years. So 100 years later, the asset is worth zero. Am I right? So using a straight line depreciation, you actually lose 1% value per year. But on the flip side, because of inflation, inflation means the rising cost of living. That means the, the hawkers will sell things more expensive. Then even if the shopping mall, your uh, food center, your, your retail mall, the sell the goods item will be more expensive. The rents will be more expensive. So a long term uh, inflation of two to three percent, that's the growth. Inflation is actually the growth of your rental. So there's also two to three percent rental growth. On the flip side, your returns, your yield, usually you can get about 5 to 6% uh, dividend yield uh, from, from the REITs. So basically when you own REITs, right, in the long term, right, it's not high returns. Basically you own REITs, right, there's little or no capital gains. Or because your rental increase is offset by your depreciation, what you are really getting is purely just your dividend yield. Even you look at blue chip REITs like uh, Capital More Trust, you look at the 20 year chart, all the way they, they, their historical average is about $2. 20 year already, they still $2. So you're buying REITs, it's more like a bond like instrument. But a government bond is safer. A government bond is risk free, there's no volatility. When you buy a 10 year bond, end of the 10 year, you get back your principal, and every year you enjoy the 4% risk free government interest. You put your money in CPF, you get 4% risk free for 20, 30 years. But the problem is that 4% is too low. You die to inflation. Whereas REITs, like doing such a crash, right, you can get 6, 7, or even 8% dividend yield. So REITs is like a bond like instrument you know, because it pays you a quarterly or a semi annual uh, dividend, like a bond. But the thing is that there is a price fluctuation. So is this volatility in REITs good or a bad thing? People will tell you that this is a bad thing. This is high risk because your stock price can crash 50%. But I'm the reverse. In, when you buy a bond, right, or that, because like a government bond, right, it, it's always trading at hundred dollar par value. There's no price movement. When you buy, you get four percent risk free. It's always the same deal. It's risk free. There's zero volatility, but there's also zero opportunity. Risk is good because it's volatile. When it crash, you can go in and buy cheap, and that's where you can get opportunity. So in like, if you bought in a recent crash, you are getting seven point five percent dividend yield. Then you don't sell. You don't sell it for 10 years, you are locked in. Every year you get 7.5% already. Would you rather hold a REIT paying 7.5% or rather hold a government bond paying 4% and you hold both the, the asset for 10 years? Which one will make you, make you rich? The 4% government bond is not going to make you rich. You only preserve your purchasing power. The 7.5% risk is, is going to make you slightly richer. Your, your returns are actually double. So, so that's how I play the risk market. You want to buy risk when people are fearful. So the same thing now. So people say that risk, ah, wow, it's a lost decade. Ah. Buy risk is no good. Ah. Because nowadays people are very pessimistic on risk. Or you don't have capital gains. Ah. It's a lousy asset. But it's the, doing the lows is where you can buy. And, and you get the 7.5% dividend. So that's very attractive. Ah. The same thing goes for Alibaba. Alibaba, if I draw a chart, it will be the same chart. 10 years ago, 2014, Alibaba IPO at $68. JD IPO at $19. And they have picked at Alibaba 320 then JD is $100. Or then JD crashed from 100 to 25 Alibaba crashed from 320 to now $70. Alibaba and JD is the same, lost that kid. So do you want to buy at the lows or do you want to pass on this opportunity? Because the same thing, so it's the same thing. 
when REITs was crashing, everyone tell you that it's gonna get worse, Fed's gonna raise interest rate, it's gonna go lower. So now Hong Kong, Hansen Index, four year bear market already. What are the experts telling you? Experts telling you that China is uninvestable, it's gonna get worse. US China tension is gonna get worse, it's uninvestable. My view is that Alibaba Hansen Tech is at the, this same uh, point. People tell you that it will be a lost decade ahead. I tell you that it's already a lost decade. It's a bull market ahead. Yeah, so, so that's my thinking. But in the end, my views are biased because I invested in JD, Baba and SE. So danger is opportunity. Yeah, so if you miss the boat on REITs, so be it. You, you, you did not buy the REITs uh, when, when it was fire sale. It's okay. Markets will always present you with opportunity, but all the opportunity looks the same. You will only get a fire sale when nobody wants the asset. When everybody say that it's gonna get worse, it's gonna drop further. If you can leave the herd and be a contrarian and buy cheap, that's where you can make big money. Same thing is happening uh, in, in the Hong Kong market now. So you can choose to pass this opportunity if you're not confident, but if you are greedy when others are fearful, you seize the opportunity, you can be rewarded. Yeah. So uh, continue back on the US market. So Hong Kong uh, market, uh, I, I won't talk much. Uh. Today I talk mostly about the US market because the past one and a half week, well, Hong Kong market keep crashing. I cover a lot of it. So today I talk more about the US market. So Goldman Sachs uh, say that if there's a pullback, uh, buy the dip. So if, if the stocks drop after repricing the fat cards, just buy the dip. So Goldman Sachs, a lot of analysts now they are super bullish. In fact, everyone is bullish on the US market and bearish on the China market. So you expect Fed to start cutting rates in the second half of 2024. So everyone is optimistic or that the inflation will be less than 3% in the first half and that the Fed will start cutting rate uh, in the second half of 2024. So my personal view is that they might be too optimistic. Uh, so will this happen or not? I don't know. Or I'm not a macroeconomist, but my view is that there is a chance that uh, in, in, the inflation 3%, yes, it hit the target, but it will be sticky. It stick at, the normal CPI sticks at 3%, the core CPI is sticky at 4%. That, that's my view. It, it's coming down fast, but then it, it's not one straight line all the way down to 2% or 0%. It, it will be sticky at some point. So we believe that in the quality factor and large cap will tend to outperform in this type of environment. So that uh, Goldman Sachs is saying that in this environment where inflation is low, or uh, large cap, big tech companies will tend to perform. Yeah, so basically the magnificent seven. Uh. So Goldman Sachs right, says that although the valuations are high, but they say that it will continue to go higher. So basically I say follow the trend. Don't bet against the trend. Continue to buy big tech companies. Yeah, so you can see that the Magnificent 7, right, the market cap has gained a lot. Whereas the S&P 500 as a whole, is just up a bit only from, from the base level. Or like from the base level, it's up like 1.5 times. Where this one is up uh, five, five, 5 times. Or in terms of market cap, like 5, 5 billion against uh, 1.5 billion. Yeah, so my view is that there's a lot of hype on the Magnificent 7. But the momentum is so strong. So it will, the bubble will continue to grow. Like I tell you all yesterday, uh, the P ratio is about 31, 32 times earnings. So uh, the Super 7, they might be pushed to 35 or even 40 times earnings. Then usually it will take a black swan event, a, 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 a something that spooks the market for, for the bubble to pop. In my view, right, the one that is that could pop it could be the election, which is to, towards the fourth quarter of uh. 2024. Uh, so my view is that the first half of the next year unlikely to crash. Because next year is the election year. So Biden will try his best uh, uh, to make sure there's no recession, there's no market crash. So that everything looks good, he will be re-elected. But uh, then in the third and fourth quarter, as the election campaign starts to go, then we'll see all the drama. Yeah, so bearing something very real happen uh, like another war happen or what a taiwan evasion or what but uh if everything looks normal then i think the first half of next year the u.s market will continue to go higher yeah so if you want to buy into the u.s market like what i said yesterday 
buy to the more solid one like Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, and Alphabet. Whereas Apple, Nvidia, and Tesla, uh, I, I would say to to avoid them now. Be selective, uh, be be selective. Yeah, if not, just buy buy the index if if you're not confident. Like today, I saw the video by the Mr. Lu. Yeah, he said he wanted to change his the ETF from the SPY uh, into the MSCI uh, Global ETF. But the Global ETF, 70% is US, 30% is emerging market. So if you switch over, it doesn't really uh, diversify you. So my, my view is that if you want to diversify, right, then example, your portfolio is 100% uh, SPY and QQQ. You want to diversify a bit, maybe you can trim. Uh, sell 20%, then 80% in US, 20% you buy into the Chinese market, like the MCHI, like the Chinese ETF. But up to you, up to you. Yeah. I think it's a mistake la, if, if to, for now that if you are 100% US and have zero exposure to the Chinese market, you, you might not have, you might not be like me 100% in the Chinese market. But if you have zero <laughs> exposure to the Chinese market, you will regret. Yeah, because if the next 10 years, China get out of this lost decade, you will be a bull run and you will miss out a lot of, of these gains and you will underperform. So you want to have at least some exposure to the Chinese market even if you don't believe in the Chinese market because it's the second largest uh, economy. So for Goldman, right, they are very bullish uh, on uh, all these uh, big tech companies. So these big tech companies, they also have some problems uh, uh, because they are actually too monopolistic. <laughs> like Amazon, previously I mentioned, they were facing the, the lawsuit because they were having a 50% or you know, commission rate. So the government wants to break their monopoly. Was Amazon, the market share, I think it's like 50% market share, too dominative already. Or they can charge a 50% commission on the merchant. That, that's too much already. That's why they are being sued. Then for uh, the app store, right? Like in the US, it's basically a duopoly. No matter what phone you use, right? You either use the Apple phone, which is the iOS, or use an Android phone, or use under Alphabet, that is the Google Play Store. So they, they feel that this duopoly, right, or is anti-competitive. So they are being sued by Epic Games. So who is Epic Games? Epic Games are, like, like uh, you see here, right, is it a game game company? It's one of the major game companies, and it is owned by Tencent. Tencent has a 40% stake in Epic Games. So the problem with Epic Games is that whatever games they sell, right, they have to pay a 30% commission, either to Apple or to Alphabet. So the Chinese players, as long as they are selling games, is uh, their margins are being compressed by this duopoly. Because when, when uh, the gamers spend money, buy the costume or buy the battle pass, they must pay 30% of their revenue, either to uh, Apple Pay or to Google Pay. So Epic Games actually suit both of them. They, they suit Apple and they suit Google. For them, right, Epic Games, their, their lawsuit against Apple, they lost it. But in this big surprise, they actually won the lawsuit against Alphabet. So tonight, Alphabet, likely the, the stock price will, will come down a bit. So uh, Epic Games, right, sued uh, Google in 2020, three years ago, using its dominant position to squeeze excess profit out of developers. So 30%. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That, uh, it, they should charge like 10% like that. Okay? Because they are just providing a platform. You provide a platform, why, why you charge 30% so much? It's ridiculous. Yeah. So today the verdict is a win for all app developers and consumers. So uh, the app developers, they will make more revenues. Of course, they, they, instead of paying 30%, maybe they just pay 10% to the app store. So they get more profits. They can reinvest the profits to make uh, better products or they can lower the price. So if they want to take uh, 7%, at $7 of revenue, they must price the product at $10 because $3 uh, goes to the uh, Google Play Store. But now if, if they charge a 10% uh, commission instead, they can price the product at $8, a $2 cheaper price. Also that they still get the $7, $1 uh, goes to the uh, Google Store. So by charging a lower commission from 30% to 10%, is a win for the app developers and the consumers. The big loser will be Alphabet. Yeah, so they, they abuse their monopoly practice to extract exorbitant fees because these fees, right, is actually subjective. Like, uh, 
for, for the alphabet right some some people they, they don't pay 30 percent they pay a lower fee example the tech giant uh, which is alphabet uh, actually paid 360 million to game companies like active blizzard or uh, and 19 other game developers to start an initiative called project hugging so all these are actually the u.s game game players also uh epic which is under the Ch chinese player tencent or said this was aimed at discouraging them from developing rival app so you monopolize was all oh, the the game companies uh, support alphabet so technically right this is like a rebate like that so yes active vision th their games they pay a 30 percent commission but they are getting a rebate uh, back from alphabet through this uh six three hundred sixty million so their actual real cost is less than 30 percent commission whereas epic store because it's a chinese company he has to pay the 30 percent so during the internal strategy deliberations google as at one point discussed purchasing a 20 percent stake in epic for two billion oh, but they never went ahead uh. basically they cannot sue they think that they will lose so they want to buy out uh, epic but, but epic but uh when they wanted to do this i think tencent raised their stakes to 40 percent so lo no point uh. if they buy 20 percent in but the big brother is still tencent tencent is definitely a competitor against uh alphabet yeah so in the trial right, you see epic also point out that google's decision to let spotify use its own payment system without giving google a cut of the revenue so what happened is that right example you, you use the app right in the app itself if you make payment google gets a 30 percent cut so one way they do right to play around this right is that they let you click to go to another external link or in the app they get your email then they email you to ask you to sign up as a member so when you're using your browser to sign up it actually bypass the google pay and they don't have to pay the 30 percent uh, commission so this is what epic did with, with their games they actually for for the consumers that download epic games when they want to make payment they will actually redirect out to a third party browser so because of this apple and google actually ban epic the game and take it off shelf because they say that it bypassed their their payment system they are not being fairly compensated or for providing the, the app store whereas that spotify so spotify they, they are able to do so because i think google has its own like investing portfolio i think google has a stake in spotify or something they have some sort of uh partnership that's why spotify has an advantage they don't have to pay the 30 percent commission to google so that that's a huge advantage without the 30 percent uh tax cut so it's very unfair it's very unfair yeah that's why in the end uh google lost this lawsuit so the worry right so definitely alphabet will drop to tonight apple might also drop apple might drop is because people think that epic send uh epic games right because they win this lawsuit they can use this as a basis to fight with apple again they can sue apple again using uh, this same reasoning and i think there's a high chance that they will win so my view is that number one they are charging too much uh, 30 percent commission is is ridiculous uh. a, a more fair commission is something like 10 or or, or 15 percent but google i think they got uh, after they got sued in 2020 they did some adjustment so now it's not all the apps fixed they take a 30 percent cut there's a range uh, 10 to 30 percent i think like education all this like the more like got government initiative all those type maybe they, they take 10 percent only so it, for google now they're charging 10 to 30 percent depending on what product uh category but apple is strictly all 30 percent yeah so but my, my, uh, so in the future they will be nerfed lah. then secondly in china right uh the chinese players they are frustrated with the duopoly of uh, apple pay and google pay that's why now we have the huawei harmony os xiaomi hyper os so in the next five to ten years uh the ecosystem of the mobile phone will be disrupted then it will come from china middle east south africa they will decide that why must i use uh U us big tech uh, company i can use chinese big tech technology like harmony os or uh, hyper os example if they burn money to capture market share you, they give you the phone for free but you use the phone for free example it's a cheap 50 dollar phone they let the african people use but you must use the harmony os wow. huh? so that that might be their game plan
So, speaking of developing country, so yesterday I mentioned uh, Jensen Huang, uh, he was in Vietnam and he was keen to open another uh, research center and a semiconductor plant in Vietnam. So today the news is that Emperor C is, is also visiting Vietnam. Yeah, so many, many people are in Vietnam to do trade and to make investment because of the US-China tension. Vietnam is the one that benefits uh, the most. So Jensen Huang captured or, or, or on Twitter picture that he's eating the fur la. So this is the best one la. The picture at the right you can see the beef noodle, the juicy juicy. Food. So this is the best. Every, every when I, I'm in Vietnam right, every morning, I will eat fur. Yeah, this, this is the best. Then uh, usually uh, when you go to those the uh, street store right, oh the chair the table is very small. You just eat fur. Then you order the coffee, the Vietnam coffee, the fragrance. Wow, a, a totally different level. Vietnam coffee and fur la, oh my, my, will make your back, breakfast complete. So what I like about Jensen Huang is that wow, although he's a billionaire, he still sit down on the streets and eat. Yeah, respect, respect. I thought he would ask his assistant Tapao back to his hotel or, or something. Yeah. So Nvidia, uh, which is getting a lot of hype in the US market because uh, the, their stock price is so high, 400, 500. You notice that they are, re they are still raising capital. They actually, like even like Tesla and Nvidia, right? Every one or two years, right? They sell shares. They do placement, as a more like 1% outstanding shares at a small discount to current market price and they raise money. So they have a lot of cash uh, in their balance sheet. And one way that Nvidia deploys it, right? Is they use it as investment. So now they are a big AI investor already. So uh, based on reports by the deal room, well, Nvidia participated in 35 deals this year, 2023, six times more than last year. So even their, the uh, H100 chips selling very well this year, they make the profits, a lot of profits. They also use it as investment. So Nvidia is slowly changing already because they know that their chip business, right? It's getting more and more competitive that like AMD just launched their new chip. Next year, I think at least five or ten other companies are going to launch new AI chips. And all of them, they're going to say that their chip is as good or better than NVIDIA and AMD. It's going to be very competitive. So he's, he's quite smart. So he's now diversifying away or into uh, investment and mostly uh, focused in uh, AI. So, but the funny thing about his investment that I don't like, I see as a red flag is that their portfolio, right, uh, includes like infection AI or cohere. So this is basically like ChatGPT, uh, but, but it's another version of ChatGPT. So they want to use this to compete against their customers like Microsoft and Alphabet. Oh, on one side, they sell them the high-end chips, but on another side, another side the Nvidia wants to compete uh, with the big tech giants. Right? So he is very ambitious. He wants to be a tech giant also, Nvidia. Uh, they wants to fight into Alphabet and Microsoft the territory by uh, in investing in the same products that are similar to ChatGPT. Chat then the, the funny thing right is that they have other investments like Hugging Face or I think it's like the face scanning or what one or data provider of data tools for AI developers. Then there's CallWeave. So I mentioned before about CallWeave. CallWeave basically is a data center company and they purchase all their chips for Nvidia, but their biggest and probably the only customer is also Nvidia. So it's very weird. Then they also have the Mistra, uh, Paris-based AI startup. So the funny thing, right, is this this purple line that you must be very careful about Nvidia. The one thing that all these companies that I mentioned here in this page that have in common that they are all Nvidia customers, either using their graphic uh, processing unit or their software. So the funny thing is that MDVA, right, they invest in all these companies, right? They are actually all their customers that buy the MDVA chips. And through my past sharings, I, I shared two different companies. So I, what I see, right, if, uh, in, in a few minute summary, right, the gist of it is that, example, like call with their own unit, they actually sell the chips to call with, right? On credit, so CallWave is uh their backer actually have a credit 
of a borrowing example like uh they, they are able to get some borrowings of like uh, half a billion or uh, to pay for the chips then they get the chips then they get the chips ready for the data center then they rent the computer uh, power back to uh nvidia so it's that left hand past right hand so actually there's there's nothing being involved or oh, is that i pass you the chips then you pass me back the computing power you don't have to pay me any money oh so it's like paper trading like that so there, there is uh like you see on twitter and some some websites there are people saying that nvidia the accounting uh, could be some creative accounting or that they are like uh, create creating artificial demand for their high-end chips or to push the prices uh, even higher and in my past sharing i've shown you the two decade long history of uh, nvidia they have at least three to four incidents uh, or of of uh, accounting scandal or fraud all this uh. so for me i think jensen Huan is, is a very smart man uh. Uh, but my view is that nvidia yes they are now the leader or uh, in terms of the this high-end processing chips but there are three main things that, that i don't like about N nvidia one is their mode is technology a mode my answer is no lah, because now he, they are the best but there are at least 10 20 30 people behind them running the same race and trying to overtake them so nvidia must keep running also they must keep running at full speed if they stumble or if they slow down like every year they must launch a new chip that's faster and better if that year they cannot announce a better faster chip the stock price will, will drop because other people will catch up so it's that marathon like that they are now leading the marathon race but there are 30 people running behind him oh he if he fall down or stumble everyone is gonna overtake him eh? so that's that's how much stress he has there is a lot of stress and number two like i mentioned the accounting feels a bit creative so it's difficult for me to trust the management or oh, and, and this industry is beyond my support of com competence i don't know how they book the revenue earnings all this it's like a black box to me number three there's a lot of insider selling like i shared the other time or oh, insiders every month they keep selling and taking profits yeah so nvidia tesla i tell you all why i don't like that mostly because the management so nvidia and tesla please avoid then as for apple it's more of a fundamental uh, because in china is a huge market for apple then they are losing uh, their market share to huawei and xiaomi as people support the, the local brands and uh, buy less apple so apple the revenues and earnings basically no growth yet they're trading at 30 times earnings so apple nvidia tesla these three i hope you all will avoid or, or just uh reduce your position if you really want to buy into the u.s market then go for the other four big tech uh, meta alphabet microsoft amazon i feel that this other four is, is more solid uh, uh, that is also why i don't like the etf etf you are forced to buy everything you are forced to buy tesla you're forced to buy nvidia which i i don't like which i, I really do, don't like so for the high-end chips right uh, uh, Raymondo, oh, this this lady, uh, oh, when she visit China, she cannot mock as the Huawei launched their new phone. So she says that they will do the, the, the strongest possible action uh, to stop Huawei. But there are rumors, uh, but I don't have a confirmation news. There are rumors that uh, Huawei, not only they reach 7 mm, they have now just reached 7 nanometer already, or reaching already 7 nanometer. So the, the Chinese players, they are catching up very, very fast. But once I have a confirmation news, I will share with you all. Now they show you 7NN, but next they, they're going to show you 5NN uh, soon already. Yeah, so Chinese is, is coming up fast already. So don't be surprised that like, two, three years later, we will see a Chinese version of uh, NVIDIA. And they are being funded by the government. Example, the Changxing memory technologies. So uh, this is a uh, state-owned one, uh, it's government back. Uh, so they uh, wanted to do a Shanghai IPO this year, but they're going to uh, delay it. So they'll do the internal funding so of about 140 billion yuan. So this is quite a huge amount of money. So usually, who is the one funding? It's actually the state-owned funds. So actually, the Chinese, they're they are actually very rich. So 140 billion uh, 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 is a lot of money mostly it has always been funded as a private company by, by the government 
So the strategy now we are seeing is that the, the CCP, right, they are cash rich, but not, they are not pumping all their money to the property market. Or because the property market is one quarter of the GDP, but it's a dinosaur GDP. If you look five years, 10 years ahead, it's not about property. The growth in China is not about uh, low-end manufacturing. It's about high-end technology, or like AI, semiconductor, green energy, EV car. So these are the areas that the CCP keeps pumping money or to start up, to research, to be the market leader. So the EV industry, they're going to destroy the Chinese player. The AI, the semiconductor, and semiconductor, now they're behind the US, but give it two or three years, they might be racing side by side already. So, so that's the scenario. But the thing is that nobody talks about this. You read the Western media, everyone focus on the weakness of China. And they will tell you all the negative news about the property market. If you see beyond the property market, you, you will realize that China is, is rising very strongly already. There's no joke. Uh, Huawei can make seven nanometer is no joke, but, but nobody talk about it. People don't talk about Huawei, people talk about the China property market instead. Yeah, so uh, they are able to IPO because this year the market is very weak. So they will wait for a more favorable market, uh, probably next year. Uh, so next year we will probably see a lot of IPO. Hopefully if it's a dragon rally, then we will see a lot of IPO. Okay, so the last piece of news for tonight sharing is TikTok. So it's okay, I share with you all. TikTok going to buy into Tokopedia. So you will need approval uh, uh, by the government. So the government say that uh, they will do an audit. So Tokopedia and TikTok say that their partnership will be commercing today already. So it's very fast because time is of the essence. Once TikTok got banned already, they want to move quickly to capture back the market share. So every step counts. Uh, TikTok, uh, they are fight, fighting a close race against uh, Shopee and, and Lazada in the Indonesian market. So they will start with a pilot period. Uh, and it will be supervised by the regulators. So they will give it a three to four month period of trial. So doing this trial, basically it will be small scale. It won't be massive. Everyone can, can use. So probably limited. Maybe they'll limit it to like maybe the, the top 5% or top 10% uh, influencers. Example, they will limit you that you have to have 100,000 uh, followers or more to be able to, as as, uh, as example, you're a TikToker. La. So you must be 100,000 or more followers to be able to access this e-commerce feature where you can sell products and you can redirect uh, your, your uh, viewers to the Tokyopedia platform to make the purchase. Yeah, so it will be a three to four month uh, trial period so they will take place in the first and second quarter of the next year so first and second quarter of next year is very important while they are doing the trial and they are stumbling you know, to, to sort everything out uh, Shopee must attack aggressively to steal the market share from TikTok then the second third quarter then the race will be a, then you will be back to a fair race uh, where, where they race uh, side by side so for them they say that their main purpose is to help the seller so that they can run their business again so previously they banned the TikTok shop. Uh, I think a lot of sellers got hurt. Uh. So so now then a lot of these sellers, right? They actually jump ship. They really jump over already. These sellers they really jump to Shopee and Lazada already. So TikTok time is of the essence, uh, because they want to win back the seller. So but they need uh three to four months uh, to settle down before they going full full skill. But most likely I think it will be approved one uh, because the Toko video has very strong. Uh, links with, with the government yeah so uh, am I worried as a share as each shareholder I, I would say no lah. in fact uh, when the TikTok got banned right it's definitely positive news because fourth quarter of this year and the first quarter of next year two quarters of a bonus for the SE to play catch up already so going into next year definitely e-commerce will remain competitive lah. but I can already see the end game already Two, three years later, number one, hopefully, is uh, Shopee. Number two, Tokopedia. Then number three will be Lazada. Then number four and below, all will just go bankrupt. Uh, does this mean that I cannot make money? In fact, all three of them will make money because the Indonesian market is so huge. 300 um, over, over million population. So eventually, Shopee, Lazada, and Tokopedia will be profitable. Two to three years later, things will mature. But for now, that there's the race, uh, a race to get more people to be aware of e-commerce, to try out e-commerce 
and to grow their market share especially or for next year yeah so that's all my sharing for tonight yeah so the i see the topo bida I, I went to do some searching wow no wonder they were loss making this advertisement was just last year leh. this these two advertisement or well, in order to grow market share they have a market share of about 38 percent uh, in the indonesian market to get their market share how is to attract the young people to download the app and buy online so young people who they like they like k-pop so on top is BTS. Oh, I'm not into BTS. Uh. I don't know what, what is the name of all, all these guys. Uh. I don't know. Uh. Uh, but I know Blackpink. Uh, Blackpink, my, my favorite is Lisa. Uh. The land of smiles. Because uh, she danced very well. Uh, she, her solo dance, uh, super amazing. So the other three I'm not into. Uh, but, but then Blackpink, one of my favorite. Uh, one of the, Blackpink is the best. Yeah, so that's all my sharing. Yeah. So they spend so much to advertise using BTS and Blackpink. That's why last year they were lost making. And this year they try to turn it around. So same thing as uh, S E S E. I think two zero and two one Shopee also use Blackpink to attack into the Indonesian market. Then two two and two three they start to do the cost cutting. Then how they hire the local influencers uh, instead. Yeah. So that's all my sharing. Feel free to ask Master anything. Yeah. So today let me check my internet. Was very lag or not? Okay. No more lag. Uh. Just now, in the beginning, was very lag. Now, no more additional drop frames. Yeah. So, thanks all for coming in. What la, what la? Yeah, so, just a short shout out. Okay, Dennis Tan Che Ying. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> SC Huang. Uh, CH Huang. Chicken said SoftBank can't go back due to the SoftBank prepaid for contract. Yeah, so, you, I watched the Chicken video. I watched it, I still don't understand the for contract. Yeah, it, it's quite messy la. Uh, basically, the summary is that uh, the because of the four con contract is in the best interest of SoftBank and the investment bankers that the Alibaba price remains depressed. But I, I look at the SoftBank their presentation slides, uh, they really have zero interest in Alibaba. All their stakes are uh, exited through the forward contract already. So for contract based on my research, uh, I look at Wall Street Journal, uh, all this right and Financial Times right. Their full contract, most of it should end in the mid of 2024 and early 2025. So if what he say is true, then Alibaba, the stock price, may remain depressed until early 2025. That's the worst case. But my view is that I think the contract is already settled already. That means or their contract is uh, a bit uh, modified or whatever. That means uh, uh, saw bank right, previously they had, like uh, 25% stake in Alibaba, 30% they already sold all their shares indirectly through the investment bankers. The investment bankers already helped stock banks sell already over the past two years. That's why Alibaba is, was on a downtrend over the past two years. So they have sold all already. That's why now the $70 it cannot break below because those that want to sell already sell. All the major shareholders already sold off. There, there's no longer any major shareholder. The bigger shareholder now, 3.3% uh, Jack Ma. Uh, 1.5% Joseph Tai. Then the rest is like Saudi Fund, Michael Burry, Temasek. That a lot is retail investors. Alibaba boat is mainly like 80% the shareholders is retail investors. That's why the movement is so volatile. Because it's due to the retail investors, they panic sell or whatever. Yeah. So eventually it will have a flaw. La. It will have a flaw. La. So if you want to hold Alibaba, ask yourself that if you buy Alibaba and it goes, it remains depressed for another one year or two years, can you take it or not? Uh, but it, my, my, my view is that it won't remain forever depressed. Maybe 2024, another bad, bad year, so be it. But eventually the, the sun will shine again, the storm will be over. As long as Alibaba keep increasing the earnings and the revenues, let's say it can increase Revenues 10% every year, earnings 15% every year. Then every year it can raise the dividend from $1 to $2 to $3 to $4. So then eventually the stock price will go up uh, because the dividend yield will be higher and they give you like bonus share, China shares, ID Cup shares, all this. Yeah, so so I'll be patient. I'll still keep buying. Uh. I'll, if, as long as my margin is not a problem, then every month I'll still DCA $500 to $1,000 uh, into Chinese tech like Alibaba. JD and SE. Yeah, so that's my thinking. Uh. You see the bad view, you see the bull video, then you come to your own conclusion. Uh, 
Yeah, but but I would say ninety percent. Uh, m most of the videos on Alibaba is bearish. Ah, because the bearish videos are the one that get the click. You you bullish videos. Uh, you don't grow that fast. Okay, Lim C H India stock market overtake Hong Kong market as the seven largest stock exchange. Well, India and Japanese market doing very well. I think the Thailand market uh, is in the bear market. Crash twenty percent this year. Yeah, Li Yong, welcome, welcome. Mamen Kok, Baba down because Charlie Munger part is so away. Is it? Haven't yet lah. Uh, the Daily Journal haven't announced mah. Uh, wait for them to announce lah. See if they sell or not. But but Charlie Munger, uh, did say that he regret buying the Alibaba. He bought quite high lah. I think two hundred dollar, hundred eighty dollar level like that. But Charlie Munger in his last interview with the Becky CNBC, he mentioned that he bought a big block of Alibaba for his own family fund. That one he do not he do not need to declare. So his family fund also have Alibaba, but whether he sell or not, uh, we do not know. Chong Costa, welcome, welcome. Today Shopee is chow chow. Ah. Oh yeah, today is Debra chow. Ah. But I never see any advertisement. Ah. I never see any hype. Ah. Mr. Tokoyomi, yesterday beat uh, 35.7 for SE successfully. Ah. You call it. Ah. Wow, hot. Ah. Gongxi, gongxi, ah. Wow, hot, hot. Ah. I done. I just took profit. 1.5k profit from SE. Got in yesterday, 35. Ah. So fast, take profit. Ah. I think easily can go to 40, 45 there. Yeah. Pixel Princess, I cannot burn by ESR. Cut loss already. Oh my god. Oh no. ESR cannot make it. Uh. ESR, the, the NAV always drop one. Yeah, you can. I, I show you my investing note. Uh. Yeah, I just log in. You know, you can see it. Uh. And then my CC. Uh. My account cannot ban already. Master Master Leon, but I cannot check or what. My account ban already. Yeah, then this is the code, code account. Uh. But, but I don't check or what. <laughs> So the ESR is very bad. So uh, I saw it. Uh, people discussing about it. the NAV keep dropping and dropping. So it, it it's very bad. Yeah, I see they talk about the ESR. So one thing about lousy read, right? You see a lot of people complaining. Number one, they do the portfolio enhancement. They spend two hundred forty billion to do the portfolio enhancement. That's ridiculously lost a lot of money. Is it is it the to the benefit of the contractor or not? I don't know. Yeah, so this one is the best one. ESR read or oh, NAV per share used to be like 70 cents. Now it's down by half already. So this is the best example of Sampan reads. Oh, cannot touch one. The fundamentals no good one. Uh, the best reads are the one that they can hold the NAV per share or they can increase the NAV. So for ESR read, right, one thing that I tell you, master don't like industrial reads because industrial reads, the lifespan is short, only 30 years. So the depreciation is high. That's why, example, uh, you buy a factory or, or a warehouse that only left 15 years. You can buy it at a low price. Then your rental yield can be 10%. But you can only use the property for 15 years. 15 years later, it, it's worth zero. So you, you, you depreciate over 15 years, what your depreciation per year? Or, or almost 5-6%. Five, five, you 5-6% five, depreciation, but you get 10% yield. Your real returns is only 4%. Four, 4%. So that, that's what happening with ESR REITs. It, it holds a lot of lousy industrial asset. That's why I don't like to buy industrial REITs. I only buy blue chip commercial retail REITs. That means office buildings, shopping malls that have 99 year lifespan. That means I can hold until I die. One. That means I buy that you will give me a rental until I die. 99 year. I don't buy industrial REITs. Industrial REITs, the least 15 to 30 years. I die already. Oh, uh, but uh, no, no, I mean the, the, the industrial property die before I die. So so avoid all this uh sampan reads. Uh. Yeah, class 11. Everyone uh, welcome to invest in Hong Kong. We are very cheap now. Yeah, Hong Kong. Four year bear market. Hong Kong market now is super cheap. Hong Kong like got minimum investment. Yeah, the, the minimum shares are some is like 50, some is 100, some is minimum 500. The, the lot size is all different for all different counter. But Hong Kong is not cheap. Uh. Hong Kong, you, you need, if you are a new investor, la, your portfolio only 10k, 20k, I, 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 I would say don't play Hong Kong market yet. La. 10, 20k, you play the US market is cheaper, plus minimum is one share. Your portfolio is like 50k, 100k, 300k, that type, that, then you start to play Hong Kong market. Mm, yeah, you need, but otherwise the commission will kill you. La. Yeah, your portfolio, uh, Hong Kong market, the commission is a bit higher. US market, the commission is, uh, 
very, very cheap yeah uh, okay hantu dpu drop dividend guang case yeah that's right, that's right. Uh, ryan youtube why you say seven percent uh returns every year doesn't it depend yeah, yeah so on have average so for reads so for REITs, right, mostly your returns come from your dividend. So when you invest in REITs or stocks, right, there are only two ways to make money in the stock market. There are only two ways to make money in the stock market. Only two ways. There's no third other way, okay? One way, right, when you invest in stocks, right, is to get capital gains. You buy those sell high, capital gains. Another way to make money in the stock market is dividends. So that's the only two ways. Uh, another fancy way, the third way, is to sell option, you get the premium. That's another thing, like, but purely stocks only right is capital gains and dividends but for REITs right if you buy REITs in hopes to get capital gains is very foolish because REITs is like you hold a property you want to be a landlord most of your income is from collecting the rent so dividends is most of your uh, income so the historical returns of REITs is about six to eight percent six percent is just a dividend eight percent is like six percent dividend plus two percent inflation the, the increase in your property valuation, the increase of your rental, 2%. Then 8% is your total returns. So when you invest in REITs, you make about 6 to 8%. That's why I'm not into REITs. Once the returns are low, I'm going for 15, 20, 30% returns. That's why I go for uh, tech companies. Yeah, so you must understand that. Lah. So REITs is suitable for those who are age 40, 50s, and 60. You want passive income. So the biggest mistake I see now is that young investors, that, that this guy called uh, Aaron, Aaron Investor, Aaron, uh, Aaron Invest. So for me, right, now he's booming. Lah. Although I always uh, badmouth people, right? Like I watch all his videos. You see, obviously I'm a fan. So for, for his portfolio, right, he says that you see, he has a dividend portfolio at age 25. So not that I like to criticize people, lah, but my honest view is that at age 35, you run a dividend portfolio is come gong. Because you are so young, you have so much room to get, to take on risks. Because you're not married, you don't have kids, you don't have to pay your mortgage, you're staying with your parents. It's the best time to take risks, like entrepreneurship or stock picking. So people will advise uh, you that, oh, play it safe, don't lose money. At age 25, buy ETF. Okay, uh, if you really... Cannot take the volatility in, in the stock market, right? Then you, you go for the then 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 you go for the ETF. Huh? But if you really really risk adverse, then you go for risk, then so be it. But you must understand if you do risk dividend investing, right? You can, it's impossible to make 20% returns per year. As simple as that. Nobody can compound their money at 20% per year or uh, investing in risk. Risk if you can make 10% per year over a long run, you are a super good REIT investor already. Uh, you, if you just DCA into the SPY, or the S&P 500, most likely, right, you hold it for 10, 20 years, right, you will outperform even the best REIT portfolio. Even the best REIT portfolio, you buy 5 Tiger General, you buy it at a cheap price, you will still underperform uh, an ETF like SPY. Because ETF like SPY, right, it has innovation, it has growth, like the big tech companies. That's why the SPY or, or the US index, uh, the historical returns is about 8 to 10%. Whereas REITs, the historical returns is 6 to 8%. Because REITs is between like a bond and, and, and like an index like that and, and equity. It, it gives you bond like uh, dividend with uh, constant passive income uh, at, at a risk that is higher than bonds but less than equity. Yeah, so. For me, I think it's come gong for those who are age twenties to invest in, in REITs. You are not growing your wealth. Then later on in your thirties, in your forties, you will regret that you did not compile your money more aggressively. Yeah. So those in their twenties, if you don't want to stop pick, then you DCA into the ETF. But if you have the courage, you you have the ambition to be wealthy, then learn to stop pick while you are young. Because when you're young in your 20s, your 30s, you stock pick, you lose money. You invest in Tesla, you invest in crypto, you lose money, you get burned, you learn from the mistake. Then from that on, you can generate even more returns. Yeah. To be wealthy, you must learn how to invest in companies. As simple as that. You, you buy REITs, uh, you buy index, you cannot be wealthy, you cannot be rich. Yeah. You, have you ever seen anyone invest in ETF? 
can become 10, 100 million. Cannot be, right? Yeah, because that there's a maximum to, to your returns. Whereas someone like Chicken Genius or in Tesla can 20 times his money. 300,000 become 6 million. If, if you invest in ETF, you can never 20 times your money. Uh, because you are, you are so diversified. Yeah, so diversification is to preserve your wealth. Focus fire is to grow your wealth. That's why for me, master, although I'm age 40, I'm still growing my wealth. My style is like Charlie Munger like that. Even I'm 60, 70, 80 years old, I'll still use a very focused uh, portfolio. Yeah. Oh, Ki Xiong Wong, Hong Kong market will get worse. People has no confidence in the Hong Kong system. Why that? I got confidence in the Hong Kong system, eh? but the Hong Kong locals, maybe they don't like the, the, the rule by the CCP, I don't know. But Hong Kong, short term, it looks very bad. Uh, there's a lot of uh, negative uh, news headline. La. But then, I would say that long term, Hong Kong is basically, technically, la, a part of China. Because their, their economic links is so strong. All the Chinese companies are listed in the Hong Kong exchange. They, their economy depends on, on China. In fact, Hong Kong, they don't have their own military. They, are, they need China to protect. So China, Hong Kong is part of China. So you are bull so my views on Hong Kong and China is the same. I, I, I'm positive, I'm bullish on China, I'm bullish on Hong Kong uh, over the long run. 10, 20 years later, the Chinese will, will overtake the Americans in, in terms of G GDP. Mr. Tokomi, I got a uh, capable old wheat. Uh. Capable old wheat, I, I don't quite like that. It's not, the management, I think, is okay, but it's the asset. Uh, because it's the US asset. Uh. You, you have to be, be very careful. Go Kim! Thanks for your Milo Ping. Crypto dips. Uh. Yeah, so today I, I did cover a bit of crypto. So crypto, uh, like the support level, uh, 40k support is, is where you want to be a buyer. Uh. Yeah, it, so that like people say buy the dip. Buy the dip means crash to 40, you buy. Then sell, sell the rally. So if you buy at 40k, it rallies to 60k, you try to take a profit. So for Bitcoin, if you're not buying it as a store of value, then it's more for trading. Then you must have stop loss. I mean, you buy at forty k, then you might set a stop loss at uh, thirty eight thousand. So your maximum loss is two thousand dollar. Then your potential gain is twenty thousand. It can go to sixty k. So your risk to reward is good. Something like that I, I, I'm not really a trader. Yeah, but now the sentiments still on a bull trend lah. Be it crypto or be it in the U.S. market. Ivy Lim, goddess of SE. I will be on holiday tomorrow onwards. Take care, guys. Okay, enjoy your holiday. Hope you have a great, great time. Huh? Let us know which country you go. Are you going to China for holiday? <laughs> no, I think China, very few people are going. Uh. Yeah. Most people go is like Europe or, or, or Japan, all this. Uh. Ah, Nigoro, my wife got COVID, now quarantine. Oh, no. Now, now the COVID wave is spreading very fast. Uh. You all be careful. Shina Choi. Oh, wow. Why that? Suspect COVID. Uh. Oh, no. Hope you get well soon. Go Kim. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, nowadays, uh, the hospitals are overwhelmed. Yeah, that's why when I had my bicycle accident over the weekend, my girlfriend asked me to go hospital. I said, don't want, nah, just a small injury. I just go home, put uh, ointment, nah, powder. Nah. I go to the Chinese medical shop, buy the powder for my lips, put the ointment, then can already. Nah. I don't want to go clinic. I don't want to go hospital. Go already, then I got COVID, even worse. I just on oh, tr home treatment can already. It's just like external injuries. Nah. I never fracture my bone or what. Uh, so yeah. China Choi. I hey guys, I got 20k back from T Bill. Well T Bill now very aggressive. Uh. 3.7% everybody chong to buy. MK, I read some news about Intel not investing into Vietnam for their cheap plan because of the infrastructure and pick Malaysia instead. Yeah, so uh, I think Asia there's a lot of opportunities. Uh. Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand. All the labor is very cheap. So usually, right, what happens is that, right, they invest or not is due to the government policies. So example, like, uh, Indonesia wants Tesla to open a plant. So usually, Elon Musk will go there, drink tea, talk cock, then they'll have a special deal. So like, big bullshit companies like Intel and Tesla, right, one way countries like Vietnam and Malaysia and Indonesia, they compete to attract bullshit companies to set up plant, right, they will do like maybe a five-year or a 10-year tax-free deal. And this is not announced to public, public one. Usually, there's an under-table deal one to attract. For example, uh, yeah, you say Intel is going to Malaysia. Maybe the Malaysia government give them a better deal. Lor. 
Right? Usually it comes in form of a tax incentive. Right? Yeah, so as, as a company, you go to where the cost is the lowest. Labor cost is one thing, then another is the, uh, I would say the running cost, right? like, like taxation, all this. Yeah. Hattu, yeah, Jensen is gonna set up a factory in uh, Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam, the land of beauty. The Emperor C is at Vietnam also. Uh, so I see how, how the news flow go. Wow, Ani Grow buy the UST bills. Uh. The, the US interest rate now is still very high. Yeah, 5.5%, five, five, 5 very high. Yeah. yeah, if you have US dollar, I'd rather get the 5.5% 5 .5 than to buy the US stock market. US stock market feels very topish. But I don't know when the US market is going to have a correction or a crash. It could be end of next year, it could be the middle of next year, I don't know. But the, the bubble will keep getting bigger and bigger. Yep, CH, welcome, welcome. SSB pays uh, two dividends per year, per year. Yeah, set, set, semi uh, annual. Wow, you all go Japan, ah. so good. Uh, Harry CJL, does Jack Ma still have the majority voting rights on Alibaba? Answer is no. Ah. Answer is no, yeah. He reduced his stake already, so he, he, no, he no longer. He no longer holds a fifty percent voting rights in Alibaba nor N Group. Yeah, he he give up his the super voting rights already. Then insiders are saying that uh the CCP through their state owned fund, they are now the major shareholder of uh the N Group. Then Alibaba, I don't know who is the major shareholder. Don't know CCP got the shares or not. We also don't know. But the stock price so weak, so I think unlikely lah. I think. Alibaba shares mostly is the retail investors holding. Yeah. But now because Joseph Tsai has two 1.5% stake, Joseph Tsai now go back as the chairman. So we Joseph Tsai is a capitalist. Uh, so we now see how they restructure Alibaba. But now they have the free room. Uh, that means the, the management, the board, the directors have the full power to run the company. They don't have to, because they are not controlled by Jack Ma, they are not controlled by SoftBank. They run it as a corporation no? on, on the merit basis. But that's also why Daniel Zhang was fired. Because 2-0, uh, 2 1 and 2 2, the Alibaba results was very bad. Revenues, earnings flat. So they, they fired that Daniel Zhang. The, the, manage, manage, the CEO cannot make it, then it get kicked out. And now they put in uh, Eddie Wu as the CEO. So if Eddie Wu 2 3 years cannot perform, he will also be fired. So now it's that, uh, that's the thing, uh, good thing I like about the Chinese company. They have no mercy. Uh, it's good for shareholder, but, but bad for employee. La. If you cannot work hard, you cannot perform, they will just kick you out. Uh, it, it's quite cold, cold blooded, la, the, the Chinese culture. Or oh, 996, very stressful one. Okay. Ani Goro, what is your opinion on e commerce in Indonesia? Ani Goro, it's gaining traction, and the two biggest are Shopee and Tokyo Media. Yeah, they each have about 37 38% market share. Shopee has more discount and offers. Tokyo Media, I think, has better interface. Yeah, I think Shopee this period, they, they must be more aggressive. Uh. While the TikTok is stumbling, they must faster attack and capture more market share. So, Shopee has a streamlined business and is buy now, pay later and the online bank. Yeah, Shopee, the buy now, pay later is huge. Uh. The, the, the Shopee pay is huge. Uh. They do a lot of volume. If I'm not mistaken, right, uh, example, they do like 80 billion GMV, right? The buy now, later is about 8 billion in loans. That means that every 10 purchase, one purchase is a buy now pay later. Like every 10 iPhone you sell, right? One iPhone is buy now pay later. The buy now pay later, the typical profile is the young adult. The adult that just started work or a student that cannot pay 1000 US dollar for the iPhone, but can pay 80 US dollar monthly to own the iPhone. Yeah, so buy now pay later, very popular now. Anderson, welcome, welcome. Oh, Shopee has superior streaming. Wow, thanks for your insights. Yeah, I forgot how yeah, you are living in Indonesia oh, and sometimes you travel to Singapore. Lah. Yeah, feel free to give us more insights oh, on the Indonesia. Yeah, uh, everyone do check out Anigo, his YouTube channel. He's also a fellow YouTuber. Chun Yuan, I'm worried as a C Group shareholder. 300 million not enough to support a uh, 3 e commerce player. China has nine profitable platform from 1.3 billion based on China. Only two. My view is that only the top two or top three will be profitable la, for Asia market. In terms of like economic size, right? A mature Asia will be half the economic size of a mature China. 
Oh, now Asia is still growing, but eventually we'll make so Asia is half the size of, of, of China. La. You think of that. La. Like half, half a billion uh, kind of population, whereas uh, adult population, la. whereas China, the addressable market is about what, 1 billion uh, adults. La. So Asia is about uh, half of that. But Asia, the, the, the demographics, the age is younger uh, in that sense. So I think Asia is very important that you are the top two or top three. Number four or below is sure die. Maybe the top two will be very profit making. Maybe the number three uh, is like uh, break even, not so profit making. But for now, uh, Shopee is the market leader. Shop Shopee has like uh, 40 to 50% market share in the Asia market. Then uh, number two is Lazada. Then for Tokyo Media, they are number three, but they only operate in Indonesia. Yeah, so then TikTok is number four. La. TikTok is attacking all around Asia already. Yeah. Uh, Pixel Princess Master like uh, Lisa cause crazy horse. Is it Lisa will go the crazy horse one? Huh? I, I, I didn't know. Huh? Yeah. Go and watch the crazy horse show. Huh? Yeah. You all know. Huh? Ayo. So adult stuff. Huh? How come you all know crazy horse? Huh? In China, the what? Huh? The, there's this celebrity. She go and see the crazy horse. Then she cannot ban. I think it's the Angelina baby. Huh? Or Angela baby. Huh? A Chinese celebrity. I think the new so the crazy horse cannot anyhow go on there. Eh? Angela Baby banned for watching Crazy Horse. I think that's so the Oh yeah, oh so both of them they, they got banned. Ah. I, I didn't know. Bad Pink also got up Lisa. Was it Lisa and Angela banned on Weibo after the watching the crazy horse? Why they? Why, why cannot? I, I thought only the Angel, Angela Baby also so, so the Crazy Horse show ah, uh, cannot a, anyhow watch ah. Uh. Yeah, I, I I thought it's common to watch the Crazy Horse. Yeah, wow, didn't know so sensitive ah. Uh. Wow, oh, Pixel Princess you also watch Crazy Horse uh. <laughs> Sure, uh, more for it's an adult show lah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Xiao Mei Mei and Xiao Didi cannot watch ah. Uh. So Shina Choi maybe what will happen is that. There will be one more provider in, in Southeast Asia. Now it's consolidating already. La. Like the Amazon is dying already. Amazon attack into Asia market is filled, is dying. Then the Q10, which is the Korean player, also dying already. So the Korean and the US e-commerce player all dying. The, the remaining e-commerce players is all Chinese back one. It's BAT camp. Or ByteDance, Alibaba, Tencent camp. So it's still the Chinese players fighting it out in, in the Asia market. Yeah. The problem with Toko Bida is they, they are unable to turn profitable. They don't know how to turn profitable, so they give up. That's why they sell that 75% stake to the, the TikTok. Let TikTok burn money and fight. Then they don't have to contribute any, any more cash. Yep, CH, I'm confident with SE when I read all your posts. Thanks for support. Yeah, in the past, I got to do a deep dive on SE. You can take a look also. Yeah. Ah, Nico, that's why I never sold, because I know Toko Bida cannot make it. Oh, no wonder. Yeah, because I myself, I use Lazada, I use uh, Shopee before. So I feel that their platform is okay. Uh, Shopee is more like cheap and good. La. Then Lazada is a bit more atas to me. But both platform, I feel I like Shopee more. I myself, I use Shopee. La. I buy at least one purchase per month la, from, 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 the shop, from the Shopee. La. Like my computer table, I buy $80. Quite cheap only. Yeah, then I might need buy, buy some like pillow or what from, from the Shopee. La. Pillow blanket, I buy from Shopee. Then delivered to my to my doorstep. So Tokyo Bidia, I don't know much. Oh, but thanks for your feedback. Tokyo Bidia cannot make it. So so that's good sign. Ah. That's why Tokyo Bidia, they are so quickly and so fast to, to sell over to TikTok. So it's a bad purchase ah, for, for, for TikTok, I, I would say. Yeah. Yep, CH. SE should go up tonight, back to 40. Lah. Slowly, lah, slow and steady. Lah. Just wait for the next uh, coming results. Yeah. Oh, Anigo, you also own Tokyo Media. You own, own through Astra. Astra is, I remember, it's an Indonesia blue chip company. Eh. Astra Wiki Indo It's an Indonesia company, right? Astra International, yeah. It's under the Jardim Medicine family. So, in case you all don't know, right? So, Jardim Medicine, right, is a blue chip company uh, listed in uh, Singapore, but also in uh, UK. So, there are UK people. They, they start a commemorate 
in the beginnings of uh, Singapore until now, they are a trade trading hub. Uh. So under their subsidiary, got like Hong Kong Land, uh, Dairy Farm, all this. That Astra is one of their subsidiary. So Astra, right, they are like a car dealer like that. So they, they make big money, right, by importing the Japanese car and selling in Indonesia. So their balance sheet is very strong. So what Jardin Madison do, right, is that they use uh, all these companies under them to make investment. So uh, Astra has, has a huge uh, investment portfolio. But I, I, I forget what is their investment for portfolio already. Yeah, a long time never see. Because I researched Singapore market. It's like uh, super, super long ago. Yeah, I cannot see. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, and then you see the Astra Group, right? They have over. So Astra Group, they are invested in the Tokyo Media. Now, now, now that I know. Yeah, so, so, so like, like you see, Master, how I have all this knowledge is that through 10 over years, every day I read 3 4 hours, I learn about the companies. Then you build a circle of competence. Then you slowly, slowly widen your competence, like Asia, China, US market. Or ne never ending learning. Learn, 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 learn about all these companies. The wider your circle of competence, the stronger your conviction when you get into a company or into a sector. Okay, Max Garmin. So is it good to buy REITs now? Or uh, no Sampan REITs, yeah, don't buy Sampan REITs. Or the boat left port. So for REITs, right, I, I would say now you still can buy REITs. REITs are, are not expensive, I, I would say. You look at the lost decade, you see, the peak is that uh, 1,500 level. Now we're at 1,100 level. So the fire still is gone, but REITs is still at the low end. So now still can buy. Uh. If let's say, like you're in your 40s, you're, you're still working, you're making 5,000 or 8,000 a month, you're putting 2,000 in the stock market uh, every month. I would say it's still okay if you want to put 2,000 every month uh, to, to, to DCA into the Singapore REITs. Still can DCA. 1,100, 1,200 uh, is still good to DCA. But once it goes to 1,300, 1,400 level, it will be on the high side. Lah. Then I will, I will stop DCA lah, because it could be overvalued. Yeah, now, it, it is still, I would say, a bit cheap or, or fairly priced. Yeah, but the bargain level is gone already. Lah. Yeah, the, the boat has left port already. Yeah, but, but it's not far away from port. Yeah. Shina Choi, SIA dividend, very good this year. Yeah, finally, they, they reinstate dividend and they're booming uh, from the this uh, post reopening. Shina Choi, my DocuSign finally green today. Wow, you invest in DocuSign. Ah. This one, I, I don't know much. Ah. This is the high growth tech also. Yup, yup, CH. You have a lot of Lao Chao here worth the time spending watching. Yeah, yeah. I think not only, I hope not only you find value in my sharing, lah, like through the chat, right? Because my, my viewers is quite international, but more heavy towards Asia. Lah. It's like 50% Singapore, then my Asia viewers is that Hong Kong, Malaysia, Indonesia, or India also have. Then I also have uh, viewers from the western side of the world, like Africa, Europe, and US. So 50% is international. Because Alibaba shareholders is from around the world. So uh, example, like Anigo is from Indonesia. So he, sh he give us the sherry on the Toko Bidia. Then we know that, oh, Toko Bidia actually is not so good. That's why they, they want to sell it away to TikTok. So, so that's insights. Because we cannot be on the ground. So it's good to know people that are overseas, that, that are on the ground. Anantas, only big boy can move the stock price. If Baba hurt only, but then not easy to move. Yeah, so we must wait for the, the big boy to come back in. Ah. Like we are waiting for the Chinese funds to do QE to buy Chinese stocks, or the Saudi fund or the Tamasic fund to buy. So we, we, we tell investors can only back home. We must wait for the big wheel to come in to buy. Yeah. And you actually got another way. Yeah, you can lend your shares out. Yeah, in Singapore, we have the SBL, la, Securities Borrowing and Lending. So you patch all your shares, you pack, pack it with the uh, SBL. Then if people want to short, then they'll borrow your shares, pay you a, a interest, like 6 or 8% uh, borrowing cost. Then they sell the shares in open market. The stock price drop, then they cover back, then they return you the shares. Oh yeah, yeah, idea, idea. I, I forgot about it already, uh, SBL. But I never use the SBL. La. In the past, in the Singapore market, I, I use it. But the Tiger Momo, all these, I think, I don't have the SBL function. 
So, China Choi, Aaron, I go watch his video also. I think he want to quit work early. He want to have a set of passive income. Yeah, I think that that's the trend. Ah. A, lot, a lot of young people, they don't want to be in the red race. They want to live off their passive income, like AK71. But I feel that it's the wrong direction. If you're in your 20s, you should invest for growth. Invest for capital gains. When you are old, then, then you invest for passive income. In your 20s, in your 30s, you want to invest more for capital gains. 40s, 50s, then you slowly move move towards REITs. Yeah. China Choi, ah yeah, how come there's a bird beside your name? Yeah, you are Baba Bird already. I think you get you win the free Baba Bird. Your, your bird, you are silver bird. Yeah, you start from bronze bird, silver bird, gold bird. Then the last form is the is the red bird. Is the uh, phoenix already. Rainbow bird is the last form. Yeah, you become bird bird already. Yeah. Yeah. Hantu is red bird. Red bird is the old bird already. Red bird is all senior. Red bird is they are, they are bird bird for more than six months. L L Y S O seven master is DBS a good buyer. DBS thirty dollar level can buy ah, but recently it's down right. Yeah, I I, I would say you want to buy to it now a bit expensive lah. Yeah, but you can see it's on a downtrend. So the the thing is that banks is the opposite of REITs. When interest rates are going up, it benefits the banks because they can lend at a higher interest. Their net margins improve, then they are more profitable. Then the REITs they have higher borrowing costs. It hurt the REITs. So now because of the rate cut expectation, right? So REITs are going up because their borrowing costs will be lowered. Whereas banks, right? The lower interest rate environment, they lend out the money. They lend at a lower rate. Then the net margins will compress. Their earnings will come down. So like I mentioned, right? Two zero two three this year, we'll be looking at the peak earnings of DBS. So if you buy DBS, right? Don't be then the year after it stabilized there. Then no growth already. No growth already because DBS, right? They have the interest income. They have the non interest income. The interest income means they get deposits. Then they take the deposit money. They do house loan, car loan. They earn the difference. So the interest income will still remain their cash count, but their non interest income will die. Sure die one. The non-interest income like selling insurance or doing the payment, doing the credit card, uh, doing the stock brokerage. All these do you still use DBS? No what? Nobody use DBS because already. Online payment, people can use the Grab Pay, use the Shopee Pay, use the Apple Pay, all these ready. Yeah. So their non-interest income, they will keep losing market share and this will be a drag. So if you buy a company like DBS, right? The base case is that earnings will be flattish from, from now on. And your only returns, right, is from dividend. So are you satisfied with a 6% dividend yield? So let's say if you are age 60, lah, you are retired, you don't want to do a 100% REIT portfolio. So you might want to put 30% of your portfolio into the big banks. 10% DBS, 10% OCBC, 10% UOB. Then each of them you collect 6%. Then 70% you put into REITs. Also, so that forms your dividend portfolio. Then I think that is, that, that, that is the proper strategy. Then I will say that it's okay to buy DBS for the 6% dividend yield. But if you're age 20 years old, just starting out, don't buy DBS. Lah. You, you, your upside, your returns is very low. Ah. You, you, you'll be just getting 6%. Ah. I don't think you'll get any capital gains. Ah. Oh, so, so, so that's my thinking. Ah. You, it, it will be a struggle lah, to get capital gains from DBS. There, there won't be growth. Lah. Or uh, then uh, you are only getting dividends ahead. Yeah, so L L Y S yeah Jardin C N C is under Astra. Jardin and C N C is uh do the car dealership lor. So under Astra Jardin C N C is is their flagship brand for the car. So you see in Singapore, you see in the Indonesia also. Wow, Ani Goro. So Astra they also own toll roads and own hospital. Wow, so so many assets. Uh, S.C. Huang, what do you think about chicken theory about soft bank prepaid from contract is to sell Alibaba hacks? Alibaba can't even rise. Uh, I don't know that. A lot of people talking about it in the Twitter, but it's not a fact. La. It's like a conspiracy theory. La. Uh, so, so, my, but what facts I show you, like the soft bank presentation side, they own zero stake in Alibaba already. They already received all the cash up front already. And the management said that they are moving on from Alibaba. From, from now on. So they won't be buying back the Alibaba shares already. So their stake in Alibaba is zero. They are, they are not getting back in on Alibaba. So our assumption is that they already sold all their Alibaba shares indirectly. The investment bankers, they help them, help SoftBank sell all their Alibaba shares over the past two years. 
So soft bank the ownership is zero. Yeah. That's why the stock price is depressed now. Yeah. So but at the end of the day, you buy Alibaba is for the fundamentals. Do you believe the business is good? Can they still grow? Is it undervalued? Is is it a great company that's undervalued? If it's yes, then you buy. If the fundamentals no good, then, then you want to get out. So I see nothing wrong with the Alibaba shareholders. Render time, welcome, welcome. Our king of Baba Bird. Long time no see you. Feel free to chit chat with us. Yeah, okay. Huang, you have a ye yellow bird. Uh, ye yellow bird. The yellow bird uh, is the first, first, first level. Yeah, first, first level is the yellow bird. Uh, uh, yellow uh, is that like bronze bird, silver bird, gold bird, then rainbow bird. The, the, the four different ranks. But how, how to identify? Uh? Well, I cannot find the color. But all the birds also cute one. Uh. All the birds also cute. The silver bird is my favorite. Silver bird is a bit more fat. The image is, is a bit more white. Yeah. The chicken, the one is actually from, from Twitter. The, the, the people post on Twitter, then there's a lot of discussion. But it's more like com, uh, conspiracy theory. Uh, because SoftBank never announced the details of their uh, forward contract. We don't know the details. It, it could be something different. Okay, Harry CJL. I'm not adding my risk already. I'm thinking sell my US and India and put Hong Kong and China. Uh, I, I would say don't have to sell all your US. Ah. You can do rebalancing. Don't sell all. Okay, for example, your portfolio, right? Initially, you put 500,000 uh, in the US. Oh, now, now it's up a bit already. Lah. Now it's worth 700,000. So you can just take your profits. So sell your profits. Sell your capital gains. Example, your US portfolio, you put 500,000, now it's 700,000. So you are up uh, 40%. Am I right? Hey, you are up oh 200,000. So you are up 40%. So you just sell 40%. To take a 200,000 to invest elsewhere where you feel is undervalued, which maybe you think is the Hong Kong market. Then you, you balance your 500,000 US, it is still there. This is called rebalancing. Yeah. So it's called portfolio rebalancing. La. It's called portfolio, but, but, but this is another topic. La. Yeah. So you, it's called rebalancing your portfolio to maintain the, the investment risk. Law. Yeah. So if you, you are too heavy on US because you have so much capital gain. So take some cap profits from your US market, rebalance and put it elsewhere. Uh, nothing wrong if you want to hold some cash. Uh, like you say, you, your portfolio, like 200,000, you can keep 100,000 in cash. Then another 100,000 you put into the Chinese market. So so that will be my thinking, uh, re rebalancing. Wow, got, got tipsy, uh, tipsy. Oh, thank you, SC Huang, oh, for the Cai Peng. Oh, master tomorrow got Cai Peng. Uh. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, master, every day got the Milo Ping and the Chai Peng. Thanks all for the support. Thanks all for the support. Yeah, okay. Oh, US CPI coming ready. 930. So let's go uh, have, have a look at the CPI. Yeah, most likely uh, expected. So just for really, US CPI expected came in at 3.1. So US futures up 0 0.3. La. So no surprises. Ah. No, no, no surprises. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Never mind. Later that then I, I see, see again. Okay, uh, Max Garmin, what are your thoughts about Capital Land? Capital Land is the parent company. Uh. Uh, I don't like Capital Land because it's a developer. They still do cap so it's a bit cyclical in, in nature, uh, I would say. And the dividend yield is not high. Uh. So the dividend only 4%. So you must ask yourself, uh, you, why you invest in the Singapore market? So basically, people invest in the U.S. market is for capital gains, more for capital gains because U.S. market there is high growth tech, uh, there are technology companies you can get capital gains and dividend you are tax thirty percent. So as a Singaporean investor, you invest in U.S. market, you're mostly going for capital gains. So what is unique about Singapore market is that we don't have dividend tax. So you invest in Singapore market, you want to invest in dividend counter. So capital land the the parent company the problem is the dividend is is low la four percent. I usually I look for five six percent or higher la. Then the other thing is a cyclical in nature. Then now it's facing a down cycle. Then third thing is that it has exposure to China. I very long never see this company, but in the past last time I see it right almost like half the portfolio, is that they do like half Singapore half China, so the the, the exposure to China is huge. So if you want exposure to China, you might as well invest in Chinese companies. Yeah, so so I, I don't like capital land uh, uh, in that sense. Yeah, even our Singapore banks, we have 30% exposure to China also. 
LYS07 Master, my wife is buying a lot of things from Taobao. So hopefully Alibaba Hot Bimbi. Yeah, Taobao is very cheap. I got friends, right? They are married, then they do renovation of their house. Then they go Taobao, buy the kitchen sink, nah, all these things, then they ask contractor to fix it up for them. Then they save a lot of money because renovation is expensive, right? You might spend like 60k, 80k, 100 k for renovation. If you want to save money, you buy everything from Taobao, then you get a contractor to help you fix it up. So so ah Taobao you save a lot of money. It is it, it's, it's very cheap. Oh empty bow function says that it might be upside surprise. Stocks fall but will rebound by end of the day. Oh for today I don't know. Oh Jen Philip, welcome, welcome. So thanks a lot, SC Huangs, for your Chai Peng. Once again, uh thanks Go Kim for your Milo Peng. So that's all my sharing for tonight. Hope you all enjoy it. Yeah, so the CPA C CPI as as expected last. So 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 the Nasdaq future was up a uh, point point five percent. Yeah. Or the seeking alpha slow so uh, CPI November. See you uh, so CPI live report. Or uh, inflation tops uh three percent. Yeah, live news. Yeah, so I think Twitter is the fastest. Uh. Usually Twitter is the fastest. I go to my Twitter account. Uh, Twitter is usually the fastest. Nowadays, Twitter is faster than, than the news reporting, I would say. I just go, go to those there. CPI for November came in at 3.1. But actually, Twitter is faster faster than the official website. So Twitter is so good. Uh, I just want to, uh, CM wire is good. So US uh, non-core came in at 4% in line with expectation. So estimates was forward. So same now. Then the CPI 3.1% also in line with expectation. That's why uh cpi no problem uh. like i say uh, most likely meet expectation then small green uh. so no surprises uh. uh so like november december i don't feel any surprise. but what the what's ahead is important so we will begin the fomc meeting then fomc meeting tomorrow then they will come out the statement and they'll say that oh they will, they will hold interest rate uh. but uh investors what they're looking at is the dot plot chart like what what's the interest rate expectation ahead uh. Yeah, so that's all my sharing. Yeah, my back mark. Yeah, my my here my lips and the yeah because of the bicycle accident. But one to two weeks it will go away lah. I go put the ointment all this. Yeah, master very fit. Don't worry. Yeah, but I don't want to ride bicycle already. I too old already. My agility very low. I just go hiking already. I don't want to ride bicycle with my girlfriend anymore. Already. Not fun lah. Not fun lah. Just slow walk, see the sunset, sunrise better. Yeah, so that's all my sharing. Thanks all for coming. Take care, everyone. CBI strong, US market up. Hopefully, Alibaba will hold at the $72 level tonight. Oh, take care all. Bye-bye.